Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 41. Day 41 of the third edition. We are on page number 249 and the topic that we will discuss today is compound interest. What is a compound interest? Well, we all know what a compound interest is. is the interest that you earn on the interest as opposed to simple interest where if I put $100 in the account and it pays me 6% interest on $100 simple interest then every year I get $6. But if it if it's compound interest, then at the end of first year I'll have six dollars in interest, it'll become hundred and six dollars, and then I will get earn six percent of one hundred and six dollars, and then another six percent of the starting point for the year two, and so on and so forth. It gets compounded. For example, for example, we'll worry about the problem in a second. Let's let's take a look at here. For example, if we put uh, here's our times, here's our time in terms of years, one, two, and three. Here's our beginning balance. For example, if you were to put one dollar in the account and the interest that it pays is I percent, then the end at the end of the first year, our ending balance will simply be one dollar plus the interest that we earn. One dollar plus the interest that we earn. Very simple, very straightforward. What happens? at the end of second year. Well, at the, at the beginning of the second year, the starting point here at the beginning of the second year is what we, is the balance that we had at the end of the first year, which is 1 plus i. And now we're going to earn i percent interest on this amount 1 plus i. And total amount that we'll have is, total amount that we'll have is what we started out with plus the interest that we earned, what we started out with plus the interest that we earned, and as you can see, 1 plus i is the common factor, so you have 1 plus i, we take it out as a common common factor, and then we will have 1 left over here plus a i, and it ends up being ends up being 1 plus i squared. You already know all this thing, I know I'm, 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 I'm not telling you anything new. Now, at the beginning of the third year, the starting point, the starting amount is this amount, 1 plus i squared. 1 plus i squared, and we're going to earn interest on that amount, 1 plus i squared, and if you do all the math like we did before, if you add up the two figures, 1 plus i squared, 1 plus i squared is the common factor again from the first, from 1 plus i squared, 1 plus i squared. When we take out common, 1 plus i squared common factor, here we're left with 1, and here we're left with i. So it becomes 1 plus i squared times 1 plus i is 1 plus i cubed, and so on and so forth. If you want to continue this process, if we were to continue this process for n number of years, at the end of the nth year, at the end of the nth year, we will have 1 plus i is to n. This is the amount that will end up in the account if we start out with one dollar. If we start out with two dollars, we'll have two times that amount. If we start out with seven dollars, we'll have seven times that amount. If we start out instead of one dollar, if we start out with the principal of p dollars, p stands for the principal that we start out with, then this is the amount that will end up at the end of the nth year. At the end of the nth year. This is the balance. This is the balance at the end of n years. Assuming, assuming that we're compounding, assuming that we're compounding annually. This is annual compounding and this n should have been, that's the most important part, I left it out raised to n. And that's all it is. As I said, it's a very straightforward, very simple thing. Everybody knows about it. Let's do the problem on the blackboard. The problem that you see on the blackboard is actually not in the book. So let's call it, the problem that you have in the blackboard is 2.7.11. Since this one is not in the book, we're going to call this 2.7.11a. It's the bonus problem. It's not in the book. And it says, what is the amount of interest earned on a thousand dollars at six percent compounded annually for three years. It's very straightforward. It's for three years. So what are you supposed it's going to have? 
the amount of money that we'll have at the end of the three years is going to be 1 plus the interest which is 6 percent, 0 0.06 raised to 3 times the principal that we started out with which is 1000. There you go, that's our answer. We just have to work it out and whatever that works out to be, whatever that works out to be, a thousand, a thousand times 1.06 raised to 3. You're going to need a calculator for it. Don't try to do it by hand. It will take too long. And if you do it out with the calculator, you'll find that at the end of three years, we'll have $1,091 in the account. $1,091 in the account. So the question is, what was the compounding effect? What did we earn extra as a result of having a compound interest as opposed to as opposed to simple interest? And the answer is we earn an extra dollar. But had it been simple interest, a simple interest of three, a simple interest of six percent, a simple interest of six percent would be eighteen percent. Oh no, we earn more than that. We earn ten dollars about. This, okay, Sim simple interest of simple interest of six percent would have been 18%. 18% of 1,000 is 180. Instead of 180, I shouldn't have gone there. I don't know why I went there, because now I'm struggling. What did we earn extra? Did I make a mistake in my, yes, I did make a mistake in my, okay? It's not $91, it's $191. That makes more sense. You see, simple interest would have been 6% for 3 years, which is 6% 6, 6 times 3 is 18%. 18% 18 of 1,000 is $180. This is what we would have earned in the, in the simple interest scenario. This is simple interest. So the question is, what did we earn extra as a result of compounding? The answer is we earned an extra $11. Instead of $80, instead of $180, we have $191. We earned an extra $11 because of the fact that our interest was also earning interest. It was compounding. Let's do the problem in the book. Now that we understand the concept, let's do the problem in the book. In the book the problem says, what must be invested today what must be invested today what must we invest today so that, so that, at the end of, so that at the end of three years, we have exactly one thousand dollars in our account, in our account. If, if we are told that the investment is going to earn if the investment is to earn three and a half percent interest and this is the important part compound it compound it annually this is also important to pay attention to. How often is the compounding done? Is it done once a year? Is it compounded semi-annually? At the end of six months they pay you interest and then they pay at the end of another six months they pay you other interest. Is it compounded semi-annually? Is it compounded quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily? You must pay attention to that. Here it is annually so it's very straightforward. We have three and a half percent interest for three years. Here's our formula. So the amount of money that we'll have, we need the room so I'm going to raise the top part. Remember, we are investing $1,000 for three years at 3.5%. So it's going to be $1,000 that we started out with plus 3.5%, 3.5% for three years, which is simply 1,000 times 1.035, that's 3.5%. Whatever that works out to be. Oh no, 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 we're not investing. Oh, I misread the question. We're not investing $1,000. $1,000 is what we want at the end of three year period. I misread the question. I misremembered the question rather. This is this is the wrong setup. Let's start again. Let's start, let's start from the very beginning. The question was, what must we invest? Question was, what must we invest? That is the uh, that is our unknown. What must we invest? Let's, 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 that's, why, that's why it's very important to always define your unknown so don't, you don't end up mucking up the whole thing like I just did. 
muck it up with an M as in Mary. Do you understand? Not an F. I just mucked it up, didn't I? Let, 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 let P, let P dollars be the, be the initial, oh, let P dollars be the amount at the end. What was the question asking? What must we invest today? Let's invest, let P dollar be the, be the initial investment. There you go, that's much better. Let P dollar be the initial investment. And what we want is $1,000 at the end of three years. This is what we want. We want $1,000 in our account at the end of three years. We're starting out with P dollars. So it's going to be P times one plus three and a half percent for three years, which is same as P times one plus 0 0.035 raised to three, which is same as P one point, it should be 0 0.035. And this is the equation that we need to solve. I wasn't paying attention at all. Let's divide, let's divide both sides by this quantity, 1.035 raised to 3, and we'll have our answer. P is equal to, P is equal to 1,000 divided by this quantity, 1.035 raised to 3. Again, this is not something you should try to do it by hand. It will take you forever. It will be very tedious, extremely time consuming. Pick up the calculator. Calculator is allowed in the GRE nowadays. Pick up, otherwise, they wouldn't have given you a question like this. Back in the old days, they did not give a question like this when the calculators were not allowed. They realized this will, this will be too ridiculous to, to expect somebody to do it by hand. 1.035 raised to 3. Divide the quantity by 1,000 and take the reciprocal of it. And if you do all of this thing, you'll find that we need to invest a grand total of approximately, this is not the exact answer, approximately, $902. If you invest $902 today in an account that pays 3.5% interest, compound interest that is, keep in mind, mind you, compound interest, if you were to invest $902 in an account that pays 3.5% compound interest, and if you were to keep your money in the account for exactly three years, magically, that $902 will turn into an exactly $1,000. At the end of three years, you can walk in the bank and withdraw a thousand dollars. Do you understand? Let's do the next one. So this was B. Let's do C. I don't know why we are calling it C. This is not C. This is 2.7.12. It is in the book. This next problem is in the book. 12. Again, let me put the question on the blackboard first and this time I promise you all pay attention so that we don't end up doing inane things. Here's what the problem says. It says, want to earn a minimum of, we want to earn this person, this person who's making the investment insists that he wants to earn a minimum of $1,000. Wants to earn, want to earn, a minimum when we talk about absolute minimum or maximum no more than or no less than we're, we're dealing with inequalities we're no longer dealing with equalities we want to earn a minimum of one thousand dollars in interest that's the first requirement that's the requirement around there and the, these are the givens we have an investment on an investment of $20,000. You're going to invest $20,000 and we want to earn at least $1,000 in interest. We are told that we are putting, we're going to put it in an investment instrument, we're going to put it in an account that pays us compound interest. It gets even better. Not only is the compound interest, but it's compounded quarterly. And you're going to keep it for one year, for one year only. Question simply is, what needs to be the, what needs to be, what must be, or what needs to be 
what must be or what needs to be the minimum rate of return minimum interest rate that is keeping in mind that this interest rate is the compound interest it's going to be compounded quarterly let's get going shall we so what is the unknown here the rate of return in and the way we're going to set it up, listen very carefully, we could set it up in terms of annual rate of return, which is the norm, because the rate of returns are always stated in annual terms. But to keep our life simple, to keep our work simple, we're going to define our unknown as a quarterly rate of return. One more time, we're going to set up our work in terms of quarterly rate of returns. Once we find that magic number of quarterly rate of return, we understand that rate of return must always be expressed annually, per annum. So we'll take our answer that we find for quarterly rate of return and simply multiply it by 4 and we'll have our annual rate of return. Do you understand? Because there are 4 quarters. Let's do that, shall we? So our quarterly rate of return is our unknown. So let's begin to work here. We're going to define our unknown. That's the very first thing you must do. We must first, we must always first define our unknown before we do anything else. So here's the solution. Let, let Q be the quarterly rate of return. If I misspell something, don't worry about it. If I misspell quarterly, don't worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. Let Q be the quarterly rate of return. So the balance in the account at the end of a year, if Q is the rate of return and is compounded quarterly, then the balance in the account at the end of the year, at the end of the year, should equal one plus the quarterly rate of return raised to four raised to 4 times the initial investment times the initial investment times the initial investment which in our case is 21,000 or rather 20,000 20,000 so let's put in the values here shall we? we want to earn $1,000 exactly, we, well not exactly, we want to earn minimum of $1,000 so this is not going to be equality soon, so it's going to turn into inequalities we want at least one, we want to earn a minimum of $1,000 in interest if we're going to earn a minimum of $1,000 in interest which suggests that we must have at least $21,000 in our account at the end of the year because uh, an amount of $21,000 in our account in, in, would indicate that we earn minimum we earned the required minimum $1,000 in interest because $20,000 was our initial investment. If we earn $1,000, we should have $21,000 at the very least. This amount of $21,000 has to be greater than or equal to. At the very least, we must have $21,000 in the account. 1 plus Q raised to 4 times the initial investment, which is $20,000. So far, so good. So far, is so good. Let's divide the entire equation. Let's divide the entire equation by 1,000 because I see $21,000. We see $20,000 $20, here. Uh, let's divide the whole equation by, by 1,000. And if we do that, three zeros are going to drop out here. Let's divide both sides by 20. If we divide both sides by 20, we're going to end up with 21 over 20, which has to be more than or equal to. Let me change the color. one plus q raised to four let's pick it up on the top 21 over 20 21 over 20 is going to be 1.05 1 1.05 Do you understand? because 120, 120th is 5 percent so that's what 120th 1 over 20 120 would be 5 percent 20 over 20 is 1 and 1 over 20 is 5 percent 1.05 so 1.05 is greater than or equal to right here 1 plus Q 
grains to full. That's it, we're almost done. That in turn implies, then we're going to change the direction now, I'm going to put this here. That in turn implies, if we, if we were to write one point Q, since, since I'm writing this here, the change, direction has to change. 1.5, 1.05, and take the fourth root of the entire thing. We're taking the fourth root, take the fourth root of the entire thing. Take, take the fourth root of this, this part, and take a fourth root of that part. So that we can get rid of this four. You understand? So we have to take a fourth root of this amount. And if you don't have a very fancy calculator, well I shouldn't say like this, because we don't have very fancy calculator. In the exam, the calculator that they give us is very, very simple. It's very primitive. It will not allow you to take the fourth root. So listen very carefully. So if what you have to take a fourth root with a very simple calculator, if you have a square root function, which you will, Take a square root of this quantity, 1.05, and once you have that answer, take the square root of that again. The square root of taking a square root of a quantity and then taking a square root of the result is same as taking the fourth root of the original number, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. I have in my hand a very simple calculator. It does take a square root of it, so 1.05. I took a square root of it. It tells me 0.95 something, and I'm going to take a square root of that one more time. One point zero five was it? One point zero five and the fourth root of it. One point zero five. I think I I I I I wasn't paying attention. There we go. If square root of one point zero five. It tells me is one point zero two four six. One point zero two four six nine five one. I'm going to take a square root one more time, and there we go. We are done. We need the room. But you do need calculator. Otherwise, you can't do it. This quantity turns out to be 1.01227. I'm going to stop right here. That's it. You subtract 1 from both sides. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides, and it tells us the Q has to be greater than or equal to 0.01227. Now, keep in mind what Q represents. You must always remember how you define your unknown. We define our unknown to be the quarterly rate of return, hence the letter Q. Q represents the quarterly rate of return. And therefore, since this is a quarterly rate of return, that implies that implies that the yearly return, therefore, therefore, the yearly return, yearly rate rather, yearly rate is going to be has to be less than or equal to 0 0.0. If I had lined up very quick, very nicely, everything would have looked nice. Annual rate, annual rate would have to be therefore, therefore the annual rate would have to be greater less. I'm not going to stop right now. Let me finish this thing here. It's just going to be. This amount right here, 0, 1, 2, 2, 7, times 4. And it is not less than, something has gone wrong here. Where did I make a mistake? I think the way I originally set up the, set up the problem was a mistake here. This amount, or well, just because I changed both sides, this direction should not change. Oh, I'm so stupid. Because we changed, we switched the thing here, this quantity, something is wrong. You, you fix it here, you find out this one was right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through the whole thing again because I already made the entire video. I made a mistake. It should be greater than the minimum rate of return that we need is this amount. Four times this amount. Four times this amount works out to be. 0, 4. Again, you need calculator for this thing, otherwise you can't do it. 9, 1. Which is which is same as saying 4.91%. 4.91%. What we must understand, what we must understand from the very beginning, from the very beginning, and sometimes you get lucky, not always, sometimes you get lucky where if you understand the concept, the right answer is right there, there are multiple choice answers, you can, you can, you can kill out, we can kill the silly answers, the silly answers here would be 5% or anything more than 5%. Why? 
very very simple reason. Look, we wanted to earn one percent. We wanted to earn one thousand dollar in interest, didn't we? We wanted to earn at least one thousand dollars interest on an investment of twenty thousand. On an investment of twenty thousand, simple interest is simply a thousand dollars interest on a twenty thousand. That's one twentieth. That's five percent. In other words, if we had put our money in an account they paid us 5% simple interest, a 5% simple interest would have sufficed. 5% simple interest on an investment of $20,000 would, would have given us the minimum $1,000 that we need to earn in the account. We would have earned exactly $1,000. But because it's a compound interest and because it's compounded quarterly, the required rate of return is going to be slightly less than 5%. So if had it been a multiple choice question, if it says 5%, that's just a simple, answer, simple interest. The first simple interest answer is always there. You can cross that out. You can also cross out anything that's more than 5%. And in most cases, you will find that you narrow down to two answer choices. And then you can do your work if you have to. But 4.91% is the answer. I still do not know what I made a where I made a mistake, but somewhere I made a mistake in the sign. But we knew from the very beginning that the correct answer, whatever it is, has to be slightly less than 5%. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.